Well, good evening and welcome to God's house, no matter where you reside this evening as you watch this glorious Easter vigil service. As we've been following along this Lenten season, we have been using the metaphor of eyesight to examine how the various people in St. Mark's Gospel viewed Jesus during his Passion. In most cases, they misunderstood who he was and what he was doing. Then again, sometimes by faith, people didn't recognize him correctly. Various disciples rested their eyes upon the dead Jesus, cared for his body, and buried it. As Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, rest their eyes upon the sealed tomb and contemplate further anointing of his body the next day, they cannot see that Jesus' own eyes are merely resting temporarily and that Easter morning will bring a dramatic reversal. The light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Rejoice now, all you heavenly choirs of angels. Rejoice now, all creation. Trumpet the news of salvation to proclaim what our eyes cannot see, the victory of our King. The ancient darkness has been banished forever. Let the praises of God's faithful people fill all this house with rejoicing. And we continue with our confession and absolution. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The eyes of all who look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Eternal God, we have sinned in our thinking, speaking, and acting, in one another's eyes, and in your watchful presence. We have not loved you totally or our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself into death, that we might have life, look on us in mercy. Forgive our sins, and lead us to delight in your will, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. On this most holy night, his eternal plan for our salvation was at work, even as the disciples' eyes filled with tears of deepest sorrow. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, have, have mercy upon us. O Christ, have, have mercy upon us. us. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord Jesus Christ, who entered human history in the fullness of time as one of us, to live obediently in our stead and to die the death we deserve. Have mercy upon us. Lord Jesus Christ, whose lifeless body was placed in the tomb, but who has conquered death that we might live. Have mercy upon us. Lord Jesus Christ, by your victory over death, your ascension back to the Father, and your abiding with us in our pilgrimage. Good Lord, deliver us from sin, death, and the power of the devil, that we may find our rest in you this night and always. O Christ, 
the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us, O Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us, O Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us, and grant us peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Creator of all things, grant that as the crucified body of your dear Son was laid to rest in the tomb, so we may put to rest all our fear of sin and death, and rise with him to newness of life, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue by reading responsibly Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. The, the sorrows of those who run after another God shall, shall multiply. multiply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are our pleasures forevermore. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 15th and 16th chapters. Glory to you, O Lord. There were also women looking on from a distance, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the younger and of Joseph. And Salome. When he was in Galilee, they followed him and ministered to him. <coughs> and there were also many other women <coughs> who came up with him to Jerusalem. And when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that he should have already died. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the corpse to Joseph. And Joseph bought a linen shroud, and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud, and laid him in a tomb that had been cut out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We join in singing together hymn number 684, Come on to me, ye weary.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the creation account from Genesis, which we will hear portions of later, we hear the following phrase repeated, and God saw. Specifically, he saw that what he had created on each of the six days of creation was good. And how could it have been otherwise? And after God finished his creation on the sixth day, with that portion of creation which he had intended to reflect his image, his love, his care, his joy. And when he saw all of his creation after he had finished everything, he saw it all. And behold, it was very good. And on the seventh day, after God had created the heavens and the earth and all that filled them, God rested from his work. What would it have been like for God to rest? Would it have been like many of us on a Sunday afternoon, sitting in our easy chair, maybe drifting off, taking a nap, maybe having a ball game on and we just kind of a head bob start and, yep, been there, done that. Maybe we hear that another family member try to get our attention and they say, are you napping? And then we say, oh, oh, no, I was just resting my eyes. Which is kind of like sleep, but only different, I suppose. But human frailty aside, on the seventh day of creation, God rested. And he set apart that day as a day of rest. About 4,000 years, give or take, after God rested from his work of creation, Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, began his work of recreation, restoring what had been broken in God's creation due to the fall of mankind into sin. And part of that work of recreation was the healing that Jesus had done for so many, healing of illnesses, making the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the mute to speak, making the palsied limbs strong, the dead to live. And as scriptures record, Jesus did a number of these healings on the Sabbath, that day that God had set aside for rest. Now, when Jesus walked on the earth, the whole idea of the Sabbath had gotten twisted to the point where it, the meaning of it was perverted. That nothing really should be done, not even good on the Sabbath, according to the Jewish leaders. And the Jews persecuted Jesus because of this. But Jesus responds, as is recorded in John chapter 5, on one of these occasions, my father is working until now, and I am working. And on another occasion, as recorded in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus is walking in the fields with his disciples who are gleaning in the fields of the grain. And the Jewish leaders, who I suppose at this point were following Jesus like referees with whistles in their mouths, ready to call a foul on Jesus, do so. And they rebuke Jesus because his disciples had the audacity to be doing that work of plucking those grains from which they were eating on the Sabbath. Jesus, as he so aptly does in situations, turns the tables on those Pharisees, recalling how David ate of the bread that was reserved for the priests, and reminding them that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And after he's done teaching those things, he declares to them, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Jesus had fulfilled his Father's will, which meant filling all, fulfilling all that was written of him in the Old Testament. Even as his heel was bruised, 
by the serpent, even as he was lifted up, so that we who look upon him in faith, we who are stung by our sins, can look upon him and receive forgiveness. Even as Jesus bore the stripes by which you and I are healed, even as he took our place as the sacrificial offering, the sacrificial lamb, the lamb of God to make atonement for our sins. After all of what Jesus had to do according to the Old Testament scriptures were fulfilled, he said so, crying out on the cross, it is finished. The work that his father had given him to do was completed. The six days, so to speak, by which creation would be recreated, redeemed from condemnation, had passed. The Father looked upon the work of the Son, and behold, it was very good. And now the Son, the Lord of the Sabbath, took his Sabbath rest from his work. Other people went to work now. As St. Mark records, and when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Time was of the essence because the Sabbath, beginning at sunset Friday and lasting till sunset on Saturday, was approaching. The time when, remember, men were not supposed to do work. Joseph had asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate, surprised that Jesus would have been dead already, as often victims of crucifixion are on the crosses for days before they actually die. Pilate sends a guard to see if it's so, to see if Jesus really is dead. The guard reports, yes, Jesus is dead, and so Pilate grants Joseph's request. And according to St. Mark, Joseph bought a linen shroud and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him in a tomb that had been cut out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. So Joseph's work was done. But there was more work to be done for Jesus. Women who had watched Jesus' crucifixion, who had rested their eyes upon him, as he suffered on the cross for the salvation of the world, they also saw where Jesus was laid. Surely by now daylight was waning as the Sabbath, the day of rest, would begin. So after the Sabbath rest, after the Sabbath day had passed, they, along with Salome, bought spices so that they could anoint him, according to Jewish burial customs. But their ministrations had to wait until after they, along with the rest of the Jewish people, had rested according to the Sabbath. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. What was so for God in the work of creation was also true for God made man, Jesus, in his work of recreation. How did Jesus fulfill the Sabbath? By resting. He didn't move a muscle. He made not a sound. His eyes rested in the sleep of death. Jesus, who is Lord of the Sabbath, fulfilled the Sabbath by laying absolutely still in the tomb, fulfilling the words of Psalm 22, you lay me in the dust of death. Perhaps you and I might take that Sunday nap tomorrow afternoon when we close our eyes and rest. But surely after such a nap, we expect to open our eyes, hopefully refreshed from our nap and begin to do the things that God gives us to do as we serve our families and others. 
after that nap that Jesus had in the tomb, after the Sabbath had been fulfilled by the Lord of the Sabbath. The eighth day commenced, and it was time for Jesus to wake up again. If he hadn't woken up, if he had remained asleep in the tomb, if his body had begun to suffer decomposition uh, that is normally associated with death, this, of course, was the reason why when in the incidents with Lazarus' death and Jesus goes to the tomb and he says to roll the stone away, Martha's not so sure of that whole idea because Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days and she knew what happened to bodies in such a way. If that had been the case for Jesus, if he hadn't roused and woken from his sleep, you and I would have no hope of salvation. You and I would not wake up from the rest of death to eternal life, but we would suffer death, both temporal and eternal. If Jesus hadn't woken up, there would be no point to be here commemorating his death and celebrating a resurrection that evidently would not have happened. But the resurrection did happen. Jesus did rise from the dead. His eyes, which rested during the sleep in the tombs, opened wide, never to be closed in death again. After completing his work of recreation and resting from his work, he rose from the dead so that all who believe in him might be recreated in him. Even as St. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. You are the new creation born out of Jesus' Sabbath rest. Beloved in Christ, Jesus has fulfilled the law that you and I failed to keep. Even as he remembered the Sabbath day and kept it holy by laying in the tomb after having accomplished his Father's will. Therefore, Jesus is your Sabbath rest. Jesus is the place where you can go to leave your sins and your guilt, for, his, for your sins and guilt rested upon him as he hung on the cross for you. Jesus has taken the burden of your sins, even the restlessness of your eyes, which seek after the satisfaction of your flesh. Jesus is your Sabbath rest, in whom you find peace and comfort in this restless world. As St. Augustine famously says, Thou hast made us for thyself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it finds its rest in thee. May we always find our rest, our comfort in our time of trouble, forgiveness when burdened by our sins. In Jesus, who rested his eyes in death, that after we have rested in the tomb and are in for that light nap, and we are raised to, the, to life, that we might be fully awake with Jesus, eyes wide open to eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. On this holiest of nights, the whole Church of our Lord Jesus Christ recalls his death and burial, rejoicing with great joy in the gospel of his glorious and mighty resurrection from the dead. The Apostle Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him 
in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold us all according to your boundless mercy and bless us with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood, all sin in us, which has been inherited from Adam and which we ourselves have committed since, would be drowned and die. Grant that we may be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian Church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, we would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Do you renounce the devil? Yes, yes I, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, yes I, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, yes I, I renounce them. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and that God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. 
Then God said, Let us make man in our own image, after our own likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creepy thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of heaven. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. Let us pray. Almighty God, your eyes beheld the goodness of your creation. Grant that because of our union with your Son in holy baptism, you are pleased with us, and we may rest in your unfailing love and mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heavens. For I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Then the Lord said to Noah, Go, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean the male and his mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the heavens also, male and female, to keep their offspring alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened, and rain fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights. The waters prevailed and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. In the sixth Hundred, hundred and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark, ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations, I have set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth, when I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds. I will remember my covenant that is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When, when the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. Let us pray. Father in heaven, your Holy Spirit has brought us into the ark of the church. 
Look on us in love and mercy, remember your covenants of grace, and open our eyes to rest upon your eternal promises. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Responsive reading is from Exodus, the 14th and 15th chapters. When Pharaoh drew near, the, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt? that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen. Of all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and all the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. Let us pray. In their rescue through the waters of the sea, your people Israel saw your great deliverance from bondage in Egypt. Grant that we may so follow Christ through the waters of baptism that we may walk safely each day until our eyes rest on your eternal salvation in the promised land of heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Job, the 19th chapter. My bones stick to my skin and to my flesh, and I have escaped by the skin of my teeth. Have mercy on me, have mercy on me, O you my friends, for the hand of God has touched me. Why do you, like God, pursue me? Why are you not satisfied with my flesh? Oh, that my words were written, oh, that they were inscribed in a book, oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. 
For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my sin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. Let us pray. O God, your Son did not escape death, but conquered it for us. Although his faithful followers could only rest their eyes on his lifeless body as he was placed in the tomb, may we rejoice together with them, standing in our own flesh to see you face to face in eternity. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we continue as we sing hymn 452, O Perfect Life of Love.
is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace as you serve our risen.